Hey you guys, so I thought I would record a quick video going over the data table from the potato lab because it looks like uh, from the lab discussion that there's some confusion. And when I sat down to look at this data table and go, okay, what, what's, what's the difficulty here? Why are we having a hard time? There's a significant typo in this data table that is super confusing. So first, um, I apologize for the typo. Second, pretty much every group of students I've ever had does something new in my classes and serves as a guinea pig for the future. And you are benefiting from a lot of um, things that other students were guinea pigs for um, in a lot of ways. Um, but you are being the guinea pigs in these um, Carolina labs. So for the most part, I'm feeling pretty good about them, but we're definitely finding some issues. Um, anyway, so when I went in to take a look at, okay, what's the scoop here, the typo that I found that I think is significant is this puppy right here. Oh, that's really big and we can't have a pen size like that, but this is the, okay, whatever, dude, we're going with that pen size. Um, it doesn't make sense to be dealing with length times width when you're cutting your, um, your whatever potato in half because you cut the length of your potato in half, right? Do you know what I'm talking about here? Okay, there we go. So when you have your potato, Here's your little boxy potato, right? If you think about it, where you label the length or the width or the height depends on how you set your potato on your table. So don't, like, who cares? You, the only thing that matters is that you are consistent and that you follow their um, directions. So the way that they're explaining it, if this is the face of the potato looking at you, we'll throw some little smiley faces on there. If that potato's taking a look at you that way, they're calling the length this side, like heading away from you. They're calling the, I got a width, the little, that makes sense to me, the wide part, and then they're calling the height the part that's up and down. Did you follow what I just said? I'm not sure anybody did. When you do your cross section, what they're asking you to do is to cut the length in half. So you start out with a length at 2.5. For this particular potato chunk, you're going to end with a length after you cut it. The length is going to be in half, so it will be 1.25. This one will be 1. This will be um, 0.75. Right? This will be 0.5, this will be 1, and this will be 0.25. Now, I've been hearing a lot of like, ah, I've been measuring my potatoes and it took me five hours to measure my potatoes. Um, please be nice to yourself. And if your measurements aren't exactly precisely accurate, like do the best you can and maybe report out, like I'm not positive about my measurements. Um, but the actual size, uh, I think we'll still get the point even if you don't have your um, measurements perfect. So be nice. Like, move on. It's all part of having a good time. However, if you're going to find the cross section of your potato, all you do is you're going to multiply the height times the width. That's correct. So you're just going to go through and here's my height, here's my height, there's my height, and here, her, her is my width. So there's my width. So I'm going to end up with 2.5 times, that's a times, um, whatever, 2.5. You do that math, you're going to get a number. That little number is going to go right here. That's the size of your cross section. It's an area. That's what you're calculating. You know what? When I go through, I'm going to redo these instructions for the future classes, and we'll call that the area because that's what it is. 
I think that would make it a little more clear. Okay, so you get the area of the cross section. The distance that the icky traveled is actually um, a length like that. Um, it's not an area. It's just a distance. And so you can imagine that if this is my cross section, you all had icky, you had black come in, and that black is iodine combining with starch in the potato. So what you're going to measure at this point, and man, my pen is awfully large for this activity, but you're going to measure that chunk right there. That's a width. And again, really, it should be the same. You drop a huge potato in to the icky solution, and diffusion lets the iodine diffuse into that potato, bind with starch in the potato. Starch is a carbohydrate, and change it to black. You can see how much diffusion happened by how far in that icky diffused. If my potato is 1 pound or 50 pounds, in the same amount of time, the icky should diffuse in the same distance if all other factors are the same. So for all of these guys, the distance traveled by the icky should be about the same. So I don't know what your numbers are, but this, let's just call it x, it really should be about x. There will be some variation, but it should be about x for all of them. The funky part is the fact that they asked us, when they asked us for the area of the white region, they asked, they said length times width. And, and so think about this, and I know since you've done this already, this will be clear, but here's your block of potato that was sitting in the icky. So diffusion happened, and there's a, it's black. When you take it out of the solution, you've got this black potato chunk. You cut it in half lengthwise. So now my lengths are half. You open it up, and voila, there's like this really cool um, line of black, and then the inside potato is white. But the face that you're looking at is length, I mean width times height. So the length is going this way, and I'm sure that that was your confusion. So the area of the white region is just saying, okay, when you do your cross section and you see this, the fact is that this is what width and height cut on that in line, right? Do you see that? And then what you're measuring is this height times this width. Not the full height times width, but just the white part. So this should be, the area of the white region should be changed to height times width of the um, white part, just the white part. White, that says. So once you get that one done, your challenge with um, table B, and I'm going to actually leave table A here so that we can just see it down here. Table B, you're transferring a bunch of information directly to table B, and it's not confusing. So the surface area of my slice, width times height, is just this column right here, right? That's the slice that you, so you're taking the data. This is my raw data table, raw. And then this is my manipulated. That, whatever, I'm not manipulated. My manipulated data table is just the place where I'm compiling, like, the take-home messages. So um, the length, okay, so we've got that. The surface area of the white section, you've already calculated that as well. The surface area of the black section, this is going to be, you're going to have to think this through for a second. The surface area of the black section is going to be calculated. I don't know how you want to do it, but you might do something like this. You would probably have two of these, and then something like this. Just a minute. That person is going to have to wait, so pardon the telephone call. Okay, so then you're going to calculate 
whatever, multiply length times width here, height times width for each one of these black strips, and then add those together, and that's going to be the surface area of the black section. Do you follow that? So that one's going to be a little bit of um, extra work. But here, all you're going to do is you're going to take the surface area of the black section, which was right here, and divide it by the surface area of the slice, which was right here. So you're, you're getting numbers that you can then look at and see, like, hmm, is this, are these numbers sig significant? The surface area to, okay, all right, so the surface area of the whole block here, it tells you how to do this. And again, I would just plug your numbers. Um, I had to think about it, length times width times two, and width times height times four, like, okay, um, I just trust it. The numbers that you have for length and width and height, just trust those. You've got them in here. Just plug them in, and that will give you the surface area of your block. To calculate your volume, multiply all those guys. You don't have to do any experiment to calculate these two pieces, these two columns. Once you have these two, the surface area to volume ratio is also easy to figure out. This lab, this activity right here is really good. And it's, if you can think through what's going on with, what, with the data that you're collecting, I think you'll be really glad that you did it. Okay, I'm going to um, go find out who's calling me all these times. And um, hopefully that is helpful, and let me know if it isn't. You will, huh? Okay, I love you.